what I want to talk to you guys about today is um, how to awaken the entrepreneur from within. A little less than a week ago, I came out from California, so I'm used to the sunshine and palm trees, and uh, I was welcomed with this beautiful weather. I think that we're coming up on golf weather out here. Um, any golfers? Do you have any golfers in the crowd? Let me get a, let me see. Okay, you gotta watch these guys. You gotta put their hand up. That's how you gotta watch, man. So you can see they're uh, on the back nine, you know? So, um, all right, so how many of you who are golfers have ever made golfer of the month at your golf club? Golfer of the month? No? There's no such thing, right? Okay, what about, what about who, who got an Amazon $15 Starbucks gift card for doing a good job on the course one day? Nobody. So, there are employee recognition programs, right? Employee of the month, you get a gift card if you do a good job. Well, why doesn't that, something like that translate from the workforce to the golf course? Or really any craft, any, any type of, if you're a musician, um, if you're an athlete, whatever it is. But one, is because it might not actually work. But two, there's something about the course that keeps you wanting to come back to. There's something about, and you don't get paid to go there, all right? Now you could argue it's a game. It's inherently fun, okay? Well, it's, there's something more than that. You could argue, well, it's time away from the family, right? So that's a bonus. <laughs> so, but it's something more than that. It becomes a craft. When you're out there on the course, or you're practicing your guitar or piano, or whatever you're doing, that becomes a craft. And you don't need an external motivating factor to inspire you to be better at that craft. You, you want to do it. You inherently want to be better at the craft. So what is it about certain things that make you want to inherently be better at and other things that you feel like, well, what's in it for me? Well, it's the freedom of choice. Okay, when you're out on the golf course, you can choose which club you want to use to be able to gauge how, about how far you think you'll hit it. And I always get that one wrong, by the way. Let's say I got it right one time. There's a feeling of vindication that comes with being able to choose the right thing. And then, man, that actually worked. My idea worked. Whatever that is, even if it's something like, like I'm a musician, okay, and that's what I like to do for fun. If I practice scales and practice scales, um, and then I, I can play with someone else and I can do a solo and it worked, I felt vindicated that that practice worked. Now, just like golf and music, you have to operate within the parameters of whatever it is that the game is or the task is or the, the hobby is, right? There's a set of rules and boundaries, but within that there's choice, okay? And if you take that away, People feel lack of motivation, but if you add that in to the mix, people begin to feel inspired. It sounds a uh, philosophical, right? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys how to actually make that practical. And speaking of uh, philosophy, has anyone heard of Socrates? They, they call him the first philosopher. He's an ancient Greek philosopher. I, I would argue that more than Socrates, um, his philosophies, it was his approach to inspiring his students that what make it, makes him so remarkable and still talked about today. And what he would do, he wouldn't say, I believe that goodness um, starts first and wealth follows. He would ask them questions and they would answer. His, so he would, the teacher would ask the students questions. Now they would be leading questions that would typically bring to a predetermined conclusion, but in asking someone a question, they have the freedom of choice to respond. When you have the freedom of choice to respond, you start to feel like you matter. You start to feel like you're empowered. If you can find a way to make someone feel like they have a choice in the matter, to, and then you can reinforce that with positive reinforcement, be able to steer those decisions the way that you want them to be. And again, this is within the parameters of all of the rules and regulations and safety and protocol and operational strategies. But there is, and this is where I would implore you to try to do this, you can do this in your everyday life. Ask someone what they think. I'll give you a quick example, okay? You might say, or you could argue, and this is what happens. We print out a pick ticket. We're either going down aisle A, aisle B, or aisle C. The ticket tells us where to go. We're going to pick it. We're going to pick the product that it tells us to pick. There's no choice. There's no choice there. Well, if I'm training someone, let's say I'm training Jacinda. Jacinda and I are walking around the warehouse. We have this pick ticket. A, aisle A, aisle B, aisle C. We have to hit, pick these five products from those aisles. I might say to Jacinda, what do you want to hit first? 
And all of a sudden, Jacinda decided to go, whereas she would have never thought that she had that opportunity, that choice. Even though it's an illusion of choice, she got to make that decision. Now I'm picking C first. Oh wow, he's actually doing what I, that was my idea, okay? That is a little bit of vindication, okay? And what that vindication does is going back to making her job inherently um, motivational. It's just not an outside motivational force like a Starbucks gift card or employee of the month. It's, I want to be better at my job. I want to make sure, if I want to tell Anthony, I'm, I'm going to hit C first, that that makes the most sense. They might go home and think about that. Was that the right decision? When you condition that over time, people feel like they just want to do a good job. And then if they pick the wrong one, hey, next time if you hit A, that's actually, it, it makes more sense because we'll, we'll save more time instead of going back and forth. Then they'll think about that later, and the next time they have to make a decision, they're going to want to make sure that they're factoring in time efficiency. I do this with my employees, okay? I ask them their thoughts now, but there's truly no way you can ever make a choice. And you're just taking a box, moving it down the line, taking a box, moving it down the line. You can shift and ask them just, what, the, what are they thinking of, whatever it is. What are you thinking of? And then all of a sudden, they realize, wow, well, you care what I think. And, and if, if you are engaged in the conversation, they become inspired. They feel like they're a part of it. They feel like with every box that they take, they're building something. That's what we do here at Trinity, and it creates, you know, I'll, all the time people, will, they'll be working late, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll go above and beyond and follow up, like, hey, whatever happened with that, and they'll, and they'll make sure that they go the extra mile, because they view their job, and this is the key, they view their job as that craft that they want to hone. They want to become a master of that craft, of that task, inherently, without any outside motivational factor or gimmick or a what's in it for me mentality, they want to own that. And what I've found is as soon as they can own that quickly and they move on to the next thing and then that, that becomes their mindset, that shapes their mindset, whatever's next. Try to find ways throughout your day to give people who otherwise might not have it the freedom of choice throughout their day. What will happen is it'll create a sense of, it'll create a sense of empowerment. And they'll take that and they'll just want to do a good job for you. They'll probably tell other people about, hey, I really like my job, and this is why. Because they feel empowered.